Hello there everyone, welcome back. My name's Chris. Uh, today we're going to be doing another unboxing video for you. First things first, I want to say a big thanks to my buddy Josh uh, from over in the States. Sorting all this stuff out for me. Always packaged it up very nicely, so cheers for that one mate. Um, last one of these I did, like I mentioned, I, I used to do a lot of these type videos when the channel started out. I uh, sort of moved away from it, but I'm feeling that because I don't have the time really, or the opportunity is the main thing, to actually do uh, a video for every single little pouch and stuff. So doing these, I can show everything that I bring in, everything that I buy, uh, just give a quick overview and sort of list out, as it were, uh, you know, all these different products and stuff that I feel is obviously worth my money uh, and obviously I wouldn't buy it if I didn't think it was good. Uh, these two boxes are from the US. Um, before we go into those, a couple of bits here from Plat Attack, which is an Australian gear maker. Um, first time I've bought anything from them. Um, first off, little uh, magazine pouch here. This is the, their BB shingle, they call it. Very nice magazine pouch. Um, I'm gradually building a collection of as many different mag pouches as I can get my hands on just to try them all out. And this one's pretty cool. It's, it's mostly elastic, or certainly elastic at the side, so you get a good level of retention, um, but very quickly, and you, you don't even necessarily need the actual pull cord on the top there. This one's with a pistol mag pouch on the front, so uh, you can hold on to a, a double stack pistol mag and a 5.56 30 round rifle mag and one of these very nicely very well made yeah pretty cool little pouch more interestingly the Tactax Mark II uh, these ones are in Cryptek Highlander basically these trousers are a mix a cry style well yeah uh, very similar to cries uh, these are sort of in between the ACs, the Gen 2s, and the Gen 3s, there's a few little bits taken from each, and then a couple of differences. But overall, um, they're pretty much just like the Cry Combat Cut pants. Uh, so, yeah, got these in the Highlander, the Cryptek, and just another set in the plain Coyote because uh, they had a sale on. So, I thought, fuck it, we'll go for both. Also, picked up some patches from them couple down here, particularly like this, uh, there's one here with the J and blue lightsabers and there's also one with an S and red lightsabers so you know whatever your preference is you can go for that. So we'll see all of that on the side for now and uh, we'll get cracking into here. Alright so starting on my left, uh, Blue Force Gear smoke grenade pouch for their helium whisper backing. I particularly like smoke grenade pouches, I've bought a few recently, they fit very nicely on the sides like the cummerbund of your plate carrier, very handy multi-purpose pouch. People I think get this thing where they have to buy a pouch with the name associated to what they want to put in it, um, for some, for whatever reason, the fact is you can store a whole myriad of things in a smoke grenade pouch that aren't a smoke grenade, magazines, small medical kits, small radios, other types of grenades tactical snookers bars etc etc so yeah very handy to have good compact size this is an interesting magazine pouch this is the uh, the ultimate magazine pouch from LMP I'm not sure if they're still making these these are uh, as far as I'm aware this is the lightest pouch for a, a 30 round M4 slash L85 magazine in existence whether the design is the best in the world I don't know but it's all multi-cam light lock fabric and it's Fucking, you can barely tell you're holding it. Uh, I can tell already that basically it works. It's just a, a thin outer shell of the light lock, and then it's just got a small band of multi cam elastic on the inside. So that's what retains your magazine. I get the feeling it's going to be similar to a Blue Force Gear 10 speed in that it's, e it's very quick and easy to take magazines out of, but actually getting them back in, probably going to be a no no. And you're probably going to want to run this with a dump pouch. So I'm going to try this out see how it goes. Picked up some stuff from Massif, um, well known for making quite a lot of gear that's been picked up and issued to the uh, American military. So we've got a long sleeve shirt here. Uh, I'm not sure they've actually got everything right in the order because they had a clearance sale on, so we'll see. Anyway, one, one, one uh, long sleeve there. This is their Ninja Balaclava, it's actually made by Outdoor Research. 
that's flame, everything that Massive do is flame resistant, or certainly everything I've bought here, certainly pretty much all their stuff is flame resistant. So yeah, flame resistant shirt, balaclava, that's more for the, that in particular is more for the work side of things, uh, if I go on a deployment. Another t-shirt, this uh, short sleeve, volume's green, and this I'm quite happy with, this is their Elements jacket, soft shell to sort of jacket in black, and it's sort of in between a soft shell and a more of a normal civilian sort of cotton fleecy jacket, again fire resistant, I didn't have a black jacket, and uh, I think that's probably a lot of you out there are the same as me. Once you start buying soft shell jackets, you pretty much can't stop. So yeah, there's another one for the collection. Moving over here on my right. Another shirt from uh, Massive, another town one. Slightly different style. I'm not sure if they maybe got the label wrong on this one here. We'll see when I open it up. This should be a combat type shirt. Um, and this one should be a standard one. I actually got a pair of gloves. So I seem to have got that wrong. See what happens with that. Surefire G2X. This is going in my car, in, in the glove box. I'm starting to put together a few bits of emergency kit. Uh, I've not. I've only been driving for a couple of years, but the number of accidents I've driven past is well, I've, I've lost count long ago. Some of them pretty serious looking. Uh, I've never been the first on the scene, but I've got some close personal friends who've been first at uh, you know. Uh, motor vehicle incident where there have been fatalities and you know whether it's day or night I think it's a good idea just to have a small amount of medical kit on you and uh, obviously when you talk about night you're going to need a torch to see what the hell you're doing if you're going to have to treat a casualty so I managed to pick that up for a good deal good quality obviously leave it in the glove box if you need it it's there if you don't you don't but you know. ATS short M4 mag pouch. Uh, again, another one for the collection to try out. Very simple, just uh, three pals rows tall. Elastic, adjustable elastic for the retention there. This should be a good pouch, so I'm looking forward to giving that one a go. It should go down on the, on the old belt setup for the speed reloads. A couple of one litre hydration carriers and pouches from Source. Uh, these are good more like chest rig or belt setups where you're not, you don't have the space to mount a whole hydration backpack for a two or three litre but you can just maybe put it like on your side or down on the belt something like that and these, these one litres are good for that obviously source bladders uh, I haven't bought a camel back in years the source are uh, brilliant Haley Strategic slash G-Code D3 magazine carrier this one's in Cryptek Mandrake Thinking of putting together some gear in Cryptek Mandrake, it is one of my favourite camos at the moment. Looking forward to seeing what the actual sort of retention and the draw on this pouch is. It's, it's quite, you know, it's big and bulky, and it's certainly not cheap. But um, there's definitely a lot of modularity. You can add pistol mag pouches to the front of it. It should be very quick to use. Um, ordered it with the belt mount, so yeah, we will certainly. Uh, see how this thing does. Looks a little bit from G-Code. This is their belt mounted RTI wheel. So you just slide your belt through the loops and then with the RTI hangers on their holsters you can just quick attach and quick detach holsters to your kit with a little mounting wheel there. Clever system, been using it for a few years now. Pretty good. Cool. And also uh, one of the actual RTI hangers themselves. This is for uh, well designed for Black Orc Serpers uh, and it just enables you to quickly clip your holster into the RTI wheel. Another bit from Source, this is a Helix valve, uh, so that's the actual bite valve that you drink through, compatible with all their different bladders. Um, the Storm valve which comes as standard, I'm not a fan of, I find it actually kind of difficult to drink through because you have to constantly sort of bite out and pull on the valve with your teeth while trying to actually drink the water, uh, whereas with a, a camelback you simply squeeze the actual rubber between your teeth 
and you're able to drink. And this should be more like the Camelback valve. So that is uh, one area Camelback actually get right, and I'm not a fan of the standard source valve. So we'll try out this Helix, see how it goes. Three tacos. Um, I'm sure I've mentioned the taco magazine pouch on the channel before. Uh, this I'm pretty proud of. This is the Surefire X300 Ultra in tan, limited edition. Uh, they only made I don't know, about 500 or something, so I was pretty pleased to be able to get hold of one of these. Hoping they already, on account of the fact they already do the Scout line of lights in black and tan, um, I'm actually hoping, you know, for everyone else's sake, that they start doing these pistol lights in the tan colour. Seems a bit ridiculous that they do some of the, you know, the rifle lights and the handheld lights in the different colours, but they've never done these in anything but black for some odd reason. Last but not least, uh, that's another bit for the car kit, uh, space blanket. Some would call it. It's quite a heavy duty one. On a drab on one side, silver on the other. You refer to them as a super insulator. Uh, basically, despite the fact it is a it's quite thin, goes down quite small. This will keep someone very warm. If you're treating a casualty for shock, they will probably uh, go very cold or certainly feel very cold. And if you want to keep them warm to treat that, uh, shock is going to be a very common thing that you're going to get in car accidents, uh, vehicle collisions. So not only that, but of course, if you've got it in your car, if your car, if you get stuck in a traffic jam overnight, something like that. I know last year in the UK, we had some... Uh, immense traffic jams when the, the snow came in um, people just stuck in their car all night long and so yeah having something like that on hand you know, if, if all you're wearing is your standard uh, jumper or whatever then obviously you can't leave your car running you know well you're not gonna have enough fuel to run your heaters all night long to keep you warm so nice little option there that's it guys more videos on some of the bits and pieces here will be coming coming weeks, months, years as I test things out. Any specific questions, please do uh, feel free to ask them down on the Facebook page, link in the description box below. Thank you to all the subscribers out there, all the guys hitting the thumbs up and the shares and stuff, that is much appreciated everyone. Um, definitely helps out, so thank you. Uh, thanks for watching, see you next time.